it's you, Christine. There's no one else out there, is there? Oh, I'm so glad we've come. I heard you were up asking for me. Yes, I just happened to be passing. I want you. I want to ask you to help me with something. Let's sit down here on the sofa. Look at this. There's going to be a fancy dress ball tomorrow night upstairs at Consul Steinberg's, and Trova wants to me to go as Napoleon's Fisher Girl and dance the Tarantella. I learned it on Capri. I see. You are going to keep up the character. Yes, Toro says I should. Look, here's the dress. Toro had it made for me in Italy, but now it's also torn. I don't know. We will easily put that right. It is only some of the trimming come unsoon here and there. Needle and thread. Now then, that's all we want. You're being awfully sweet. So, you are going to be dressed up tomorrow, Nora. I will tell you what. I shall come in for a moment and see you in your fine feathers. But I have completely forgotten to thank you for a delightful evening yesterday. Oh, I didn't think it was as nice as usual. You ought to have come to a town a little earlier, Christine. Yes, Toro understands how to make a home look attractive. And so do you, it seems to me. You are not your father's daughter for nothing. But tell me, is Dr. Rank always as depressed as he was yesterday? No, last night it was very noticeable. But he's got a terrible disease. He's got spinal tuberculosis. Poor man. His father was a frightful creature who kept mistresses and so on. As a result, Dr. Rank has been sickly ever since. He was a child. You understand? But my dearest Nora, how do you know anything about such things? Oh, don't be silly, Christine. When one has three children, one comes into contact with women who, well... Who know about medical matters, and they'll tell one thing or two. Does Dr. Rank come here every day? Yes, every day. He's Trevor's oldest friend, and a good friend to me, too. Dr. Rank almost as one of the family. But tell me this. Is he perfectly sincere? I mean, isn't he the kind of man that is very anxious to make himself agreeable? No, quite the contrary. What gave you that idea? When you introduced him to me yesterday, he declared that he had often heard my name mentioned in this house. But afterwards, I noticed that your husband hadn't the slightest idea who I was. So how could Dr. Rank... Yes, that's quite right, Christine. You see, Torvald's so hopelessly in love with me that he wants to have me all to himself. Those were his very words. When we were first married, he got quite jealous if I as much as mentioned any of my old friends back home. So naturally, I stopped talking about them, but I often chat with Dr. Rank about the kind of things. He enjoys it, you see? Listen to me, Nora. You are still very like a child in many ways, and I am older than you in many ways and have a little more experience. Let me tell you this. You ought to make an end of it with Dr. Rank. What business? Of two things, I think. Yesterday you talked and some nonsense about a rich admirer who was, who was to leave you money. Yes, and who doesn't exist, unfortunately. But is what's that got to do with it? Is Dr. Rink a man of means? Yes. And he has no one to provide for? No, no one, but... And comes here every day? Yes, I've told you. But how can this well-bred man be so tactless? What on earth are you talking about? Don't prevaricate, Nora. Do you suppose I don't guess you lent the t- you the 250 pounds? Are you out of your mind? How could you imagine such a thing? A friend, someone who comes here every day, why that be an impossible situation? Then it really isn't he? No, of course not. I've never for a moment dreamed of... Anyway, he hadn't any money to lend then. He didn't come into that till later. Well, I think that was lucky for you, my dear Nora. No, I could never have dreamed of asking Dr. Rang. Though, I'm sure that if I'd ever ask him... But of course you won't. Of course not. I can't imagine it should ever become necessary. But I'm perfectly sure that if I did speak to Dr. Rank... Behind your husband's back? I've got to get out of this other business. And that's been going on behind his back. I've got to get out of it. Yes, that is what I told you yesterday, but... It's much easier for a man to arrange these things than a woman. One husband's? Yes. Oh, bosh. When you completely repay a bet, you get your IOU back. Don't you? Yes, as a matter of course. And you can't tear it. You can tear it into a thousand pieces and burn the filthy, beastly thing. Nora, you are concealing something from me. Can you see that? Something has happened to you since yesterday morning, Nora. What is it? Christine, shh. There's Toro. Would you mind going into the nursery for a few minutes? Toro can't bear to see sewing around, and Maria will help you. 
Certainly, but I am not going away from here till we have had it out with one another. Oh, Toro, dear, I've been so longing for you to come back. Was that the dressmaker? No, it was Christine. She's helping me mend my costume. I'm going to look rather splendid in that. Yes, that was quite a bright idea of mine, wasn't it? Wonderful, but wasn't it nice of me to give in to you? Nice? To give in to your husband? All right, little silly. I know you didn't mean it like that, but I won't disturb you. I expect you'll be wanting to try it on. Are you going to work now? Yes. Look at these. I've been down to the bank. Torvald. Yes. If, if little squirrel asks you really prettily to grant her a wish, well, would you grant it to her? First, I would、uh, naturally have to know what it is. Squirrel would do lots of pretty tricks for you if you granted her wish. Out with it then. Your little skylark would sing in every room. My little skylark does that already. I turn myself into a little fairy and dance for you in the moonlight, Torvald. Nora, it isn't that business you were talking about this morning. Yes, Torvald. Oh, please, I beg of you. Have you really the nerve to bring that up again? Yes, Torvald. Yes, you must do as I ask. You must let Crockstad keep his place at the bank. My dear Nora, his job is the one I'm giving to Miss Lind. Yes, that's terribly sweet of you, but you can get rid of one of the other clerks instead of Crockstad. Really, you're being incredibly blah, blah blah blah. Just because you thought Felicity promised to put in blah blah blah. Okay, let me do that again. Really, you're being incredibly obstinate. Just because you thoughtlessly promised to put in a word for him, you expect me to? No, it isn't that, Homer. It's for your own sake. That man writes for the most beastly newspapers. You said so yourself. He could do tremendous harm. I'm so dreadfully frightened of him. Oh, I understand. Memories of the past. That's what's frightening you. What do you mean? You're thinking of your father, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Of course. Just think of those dreadful men wrote in the newspapers about Papa. The most frightful slanders. I really believe it would have lost him his job if the Ministry hadn't sent you down to investigate, and you hadn't been so kind and helpful to him. But my dear little Nora, there's a considerable difference between your father and me. Your father was not a man of unassailable reputation, but I am, and I hope to remain so all my life. But no one knows the spiteful people may not dig up. We could be so peaceful and happy now, Torvald. We could be free from every worry. You and I and the children. Oh, please, Torvald, please. The very fact of your pleading his cause makes it impossible for me to keep him. Everyone at the bank already knows that I intend to dismiss Krogstad. If the rumor got about that the new manager had allowed his wife to persuade him to change his mind, well, what then? Oh, nothing, nothing. As long as my little Miss Obstinate gets her way, do you expect me to give or to be the laughingstock and all that stuff? What is that? I might conceivably have allowed myself to ignore his moral obloquies. Yes, Torvald. Surely. And I hear he's quite efficient at his job. But we, well, we were school friends. It was one of those friendships that one enters into over hastily, and so often comes to regret later in life. I might as well confess the truth. We, well, we're on Christian name terms. And the tactless idiot makes no attempt to conceal it when other people are present. On the contrary, he thinks it gives him the right to be familiar with me. He shows off the whole、uh, time with Torvald this and Torvald that. I can tell you, I find it damned annoying. If he stayed, he'd made my position intolerable. Torvald, you can't mean this seriously. Oh, and why not? But it's so pretty. Petty. <laughs> What did you say? Petty? You think I'm petty, or pretty? <laughs> no, Toro dear. Of course you're not. That's just why. Don't quibble. You call my motives petty. Then I must be petty too. <laughs> petty. I see. Well, I've had enough of this. Helen. What are you going to do? I'm going to settle this matter once and for all. 
Take this letter downstairs at once. Find a messenger and see that he delivers it. Immediately. The address is on the envelope. Here's the money. 